The discovery of gold in the Fraser Canyon in 1858 marked both the origins of the city of New Westminster and the arrival of its first Chinese residents. Chinese laborers arrived from California and later China to pan for gold upriver, and some decided to settle in New Westminster. To these new residents, New Westminster became known as Yi Fao, which means second port, referring to the town's status as a secondary port to Victoria. Chinese businesses and residences were established along Front Street, which became New Westminster's first Chinatown. By 1867, the Chinese population had reached 103, 66 men and 37 women. Pictured here in an 1885 map of the city, a concentration of Chinese businesses can be seen in the blocks surrounding Lytton Square, located at the bottom of Church Street. The second wave of Chinese immigration to New Westminster came with the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway. Many Chinese laborers hired to work on the railway passed through New Westminster on their way to the Fraser Canyon. Some decided to stay in the city, and many more returned after the completion of the railway. Despite the fact that many of the Caucasian majority in New Westminster were accepting of their Chinese neighbors and curious about their traditions, the growth of the Chinese population led to discrimination from both society and the government due to fears of the social and economic implications of a large Chinese population. For instance, the New Westminster City Council decided on January 26, 1880, that, quote, all contractors for public works for the city be strictly bound not to employ Chinese labor. In 1885, the Dominion government passed the Chinese Immigration Act that included a $50 head tax to be paid by any Chinese person wishing to enter Canada. This tax was raised to $100 in 1900 and again to $500 in 1903. Shown here is Li Seng Yen's head tax certificate. The increase in population after the completion of the railway meant that a second Chinatown grew up in the area of New Westminster called the Swamp, located from 8th to 10th streets between Columbia and Royal. Many new Chinese businesses were established in this area by men such as merchant Tai Su. Huang An Wo and Co. dominated these import companies that opened in this second Chinatown. Founded in 1887, it became one of the city's largest businesses. It sold imported goods from Asia, processed rice and opium, and acted as a labor contractor for sea. In addition to starting their own businesses, New Westminster's Chinese residents found work as laborers in the city. Some worked in the canning industry, like these men pictured at Butterfield and Mackey Cannery, in sawmills, as cooks on riverboats, as servants for Caucasian families, or in a variety of other occupations. Various community organizations began to be established around the turn of the century. For instance, the New Westminster branch of the Chinese Benevolent Association provided support for struggling members of the Chinese community and advocated for the community on various political and social issues. They operated out of their building on Victoria Street until the association disbanded in 1969. The Chinese Methodist Mission Church opened in 1892 and was an important institution in the community that taught English to the Chinese residents. On September 10th, 1898, disaster struck when the Great Fire decimated the two Chinatowns. Chinese residents incurred huge damages. For instance, Quan An Wo and Co. lost $20,000 in opium, a drug which was legal in Canada until 1908. Some Chinatown residents applied for compensation from the city for their losses. This application here is from mission school teacher Tong Chu Tom. Residents rebuilt quickly after the fire, though Front Street Chinatown was largely abandoned in favor of the swamp. This page from the 1901 New Westminster Directory shows that Chinese businesses in New Westminster were largely located on Blackie, McInnes, and Columbia. However, there was a long-standing belief after 1898 that Chinatown was a fire hazard to the city. The city began fire inspections of Chinatown in 1919 and from this point until the 1950s, Chinatown's buildings were bought by the city, knocked down, and generally replaced by either automotive or commercial buildings. The only building left by the time this photograph was taken in 1953 was the Chinese Benevolent Association building, which was later demolished in 1979. The demolishment of Chinatown in conjunction with the 1923 Chinese Exclusion Act resulted in the reduction of New Westminster's Chinese population to only 561 people in 1931 from 792 people in 1921. 
Chinese people moved away from New Westminster, no new immigrants came to replenish the numbers, and the remaining residents dispersed into other parts of the city. Chinatown relocated temporarily to 12th and Royal at the Riverside Apartments until this building was demolished in 1948. Though Chinese Canadians could not easily enlist in the Canadian Army for most of the Second World War due to race restrictions, they were active on the home front in New Westminster. The Daughters of China was formed by Mrs. C. Kwan and saw the Chinese women of New Westminster raising money to donate to China's war effort against Japan. Other members of the community continued to work, such as these employees of Pacific Pine Sawmill holding up a victory loan flag in 1943. When the conscription ban on Asian Canadians was lifted in 1944, several members of New Westminster's Chinese community, such as Key Law, went to fight in Asia. The Chinese community gained sympathy in Canada during the war due to Japanese aggressions in China, and New Westminster society became more open to involving the Chinese community in their events. Though discriminatory practices would continue after the war, this new sympathy led to the repealing of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1947 and other anti-discrimination legislation being passed. Though there was no longer a geographical Chinatown in New Westminster, the Chinese community remained. There were many Chinese-owned businesses from the 1950s onwards throughout the city, such as those owned by John Singh, Johnny Chung Hee, and Susan Chu. Groups such as the Chinese Girls Drill Team, shown here in front of the Chinese Benevolent Association building, show there was also still a cohesive social community among the Chinese residents of New Westminster. The city of New Westminster recently recognized its role in past harms to the Chinese community. In 2010, the city issued a public apology for their past discriminatory practices and promised new recognition of the Chinese community's contributions to New Westminster. As of 2011, 3,000 Chinese language speakers call New Westminster home, and the community continues to be an important part of the city.